Hello everyone, welcome to the Innovation Lab. So ever since I made a few videos to show how you can use this cheap and affordable constant current DC to DC boost converter or a actually a constant current DC to DC bulk converter to build a very cheap and affordable and also very efficient battery charging systems. Uh, in my videos I showed you can do them using server power supplies as your source. So, but after that, I received a lot of questions regarding if it, it will be possible to use these same converters to do uh, solar battery charging. So basically, can we use them in place of an actual uh, solar charge controller? Will they be able to do those functions? All right, so let's do some testing in this video to uh, investigate that. Right, so this is going to be an experimental project to help us understand the difference in function between an actual designed efficient MPPT charge controller and a uh, constant current DC to DC boost converter. And also, uh, can we use one in place of the other? More specifically, in this uh, video, we are going to find out if we can use a a constant current DC to DC boost converter to replace an MPPT charge controller function. All right, so let's get to it. And before we get started, I would like to say a big thank you to all our supporters and subscribers uh, for all the helpful uh, feedback and comments that uh, we have been receiving from you guys. We absolutely appreciate it and uh, thank you for the support. And if you are new to our channel, um, please uh, check out our videos and um, um, you can also check out the videos or the charger videos that I was talking about that we've made using these the DC to DC uh, bulk converters and boost converters. And uh, if you like our videos, maybe consider uh, joining us by subscribing and also liking and sharing our videos, giving us feedback and comments or questions. We do appreciate all of that. All right. Let's get started. So you may be wondering and asking yourself, what could be the difference between an MPPT solar charge controller like this and a DC to DC boost converter like this? To many people, the concern could be, why do I have to spend a lot, whole lot of money, um, about $80 for a 20 amp, 260 watts unit like this? while I can buy a 1500 watt DC to DC boost converter that will give me about 30 amps of charging current. Why do it? So what is the difference? So the difference is that this MPPT charge controller, as the name goes, it does maximum power point tracking or maximum power point control. So what that means is that um, a solar panel is not like a conventional power supply or battery system that we know of. A solar panel, the power output of a solar panel fluctuates in accordance with the solar energy incident on it. So what the MPPT charge controller is designed to do is to look at how much power the solar panel is producing and optimize it and give it to your battery. So if your solar panel is putting out 10 watts, your MPPT charge controller is gonna try to give the entire 10 watts minus of efficiency to your battery. Now when the sun picks up and now all of a sudden your solar panel is putting out 60 watts, it's gonna try to give the full 60 watts to your battery. And it does that using, again, using the maximum power point tracking that it does. So basically it looks at the IV curve of the power coming out of your solar panel and says, okay, I have this much power coming in. How can I dial down the current without pulling down the entire solar panel? Now, comparing that with the function of your DC to DC boost converter, this uh, device is really, truly designed to function properly when you have a huge reservoir of power going into it that is gonna keep constantly drawing power from. So when you do not have that, you're not going to have a very efficient function in this respect. So this is not designed for solar charging, it's designed 
to function very well in a situation where you have steady power going into, into the input and um, steady power going out of the output depending on your settings and your adjustments. All right, so what we have here is our EPV or MPPT charge controller and uh, MPPT stands for maximum power point tracking. So this controller is very easy and very simple to use. As you can see here, it has your solar panel positive and negative. It has your shows your battery positive and negative. And this is for your load if you want to use a load on it. And it has a COM port which is for communication. All right, so now let's look at the MPPT uh, solar charge controller. So you can easily find this on eBay or Amazon. So here on Amazon, we have a few good options at a reasonably priced range. So let's look at this one. So as you can see here, this is the EPVer uh, 20 ampere MPPT charge controller. This controller can charge uh, either a 12 volts or a 24 volt. Uh, battery and it does that through kind of like an auto detect function that it has and it has a maximum input uh, range of 60 volts so so let's look at it here as you can see here um, 20 amps you can charge 12 or 24 max of 60 volts then the also listed some other functions here it has 100 percent advanced MPPT technology and ultra fast tracking you can use a programmable battery type. So you basically you can go in and tell it what kind of uh, battery that you're using, lithium phosphate, uh, lead acid, AGM, whatever. And it will kind of uh, set the parameters internally to be able to adapt to that kind of a battery. And uh, looking at here, it's very simple. You have the display and you have the batteries will come in here. Uh, the solar panels will come in here, plus and minus. The battery will come in here, plus and minus. And this is your load terminal, which we're not really going to use. All right. So now let's look at the uh, DC to DC boost converter to see how it, what it has. And I've also made videos about this. Um, so looking at this here, so this DC to DC boost converter um, is rated for an input voltage range of 10 to 60 volts and an output voltage range of 12 to 90 volts in real practice i've actually seen that this can go up to 95 volts and the power rating of 1500 watts and a current limit of 30 amps so this is this very decently very decently priced at 28 dollars you can also find uh, cheaper vendors uh, for this uh, converter uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for, for in a nutshell. I think this is very well built for the price. All right, we have seen the uh, charge controller and we have looked at the DC to DC boost converter. So now let's go into the experiment to uh, test out each of these options. All right, so what you're looking at here now is the setup for the very first test that we're going to do. And that will be to test the MPPT charge controller to show the behavior of the MPPT charge controller. So for that, I'm using the DIY wall power supply that I talked about earlier. So what I had done was to configure this wall power supply with a dummy load, and that allowed me to set the, uh, the voltage, output voltage of the power supply at 20 volts and at approximately a current limit of one amp. So, and that is to simulate a condition of uh, a limited output power condition of a solar panel. All right, so to actually look at what the MPPT charge controller does, the way it functions. So what I have done is to configure this power supply to serve as a solar panel, right about a 60 to 65 watt solar panel at full irradiance so and we are going to kind of look at how much um, we're putting into the uh, so we're going to kind of look at how much um, power we're putting into the MPPT charge controller and how much of that goes into the battery and after we do that now we're going to simulate a different condition which is like when you have a cloud going over the solar panel which means the current or the output power will drop so and we'll see how the 
the MPPT charge controller will kind of adapt to all of those conditions. So now let's see what's going in here. So the first thing you see here would be the voltage uh, coming out of the solar panel. Right now we are at 24 volts, which was what we set it to. And next it shows you the output current at uh, this point coming out of the solar panel, which is 2.6 amps. And uh, so if we do the math, we can kind of tell how much power the solar panel is putting out at this point. So now, now let's look at the charging current that the MPPT charge controller is putting into the battery. So looking at here, we're putting in 14.6 volts going into the battery. And let's look at the charging current. So we're putting in 4.5 amps going into the battery. So later we'll take these numbers and we'll do some calculation and see what's going on. All right, so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to drop the charging current all the way down and see how this MPPT charge controller will adapt. As you can see here, we have dropped the charging current all the way to uh, 0.22 amps. And the uh, let's look at what's happening at the MPPT charge controller. So again, as I mentioned, this kind of simulates a condition that looks like we have a cloud or rain going over the solar panel. So let's see what's going into the battery. So now our solar panel is putting out 14 volts and an output current of 0.4 amps. And our battery voltage is at 12.6 volts with a charging current of 0.5 amps. So again, we'll take these numbers and we'll do some calculation and we'll see where we are. So this goes to show that even if you have, even when you have a cloud um, or rain or snow or something going over your solar panel, so what happens is that your MPPT charge controller is smart enough to look at the power coming in and kind of optimize it and basically give the same power, uh, deliver the same power to your batteries. So now we're going to repeat this, this same test using this DC to DC boost converter. So to see if it can adapt to kind of perform the same function that we have seen our MPPT charge controller uh, do. All right, so let's get to it. All right. So as you can see here, we have changed the setup to replace the MPPT charge controller with the DC to DC boost converter. One quick thing that came to mind was that if you're using a, and that could be one of, one of the reasons why this will not work, will be that if you're using a DC to DC boost converter, you may not be able to charge a 12 volt battery especially if your solar panel is putting out about um, 24 volts or so. So now let's look at how this functions. So as we did earlier on, I have configured the power supply and I have currently limited it to a point where our solar panel is producing 45 watts of power. 1.87 amps and the output voltage of 24.14 volts. So now we're using that going into our DC to DC boost converter and we can see what's going on here at the power monitor. So we had to drive up the output voltage of the DC to DC boost converter to 28 volts. So we'll be able to charge a 24 volt battery pack. All right, so looking at here, um, as we saw here earlier, we were close to about 45 watts uh, that the solar panel is putting out. And now we are only getting about um, 31.7 watts going to our battery. So the difference here between the MPPT charge controller and the boost converter will be that you have to manually kind of sit there 
and manually play with the voltage settings to make sure that what you're putting into the battery does not exceed what your solar panel is putting out. All right, my friends, I'm glad you made it to the end of this experiment. So in this experiment, we set out to see if it would be possible to replace this MPPT charge controller with a cheap and affordable constant current DC to DC boots converter like this guy here. So what we've seen in this experiment in a nutshell is that the MPPT charge controller was able to optimize the uh, charge or power delivered to our batteries in both uh, conditions of uh, peak performance for the solar panel and minimum performance for the solar panel. Meanwhile, the DC to DC boost converter um, showed signs of uh, excessive uh, efficiency losses. And that could easily be explained because the DC to DC boost converter is not built for this function. So if you want to use it as an MPPT charge controller, you are going to have a lot of losses because it's not designed for that. I will definitely be repeating this experiment with an actual solar panel because I realize that there could be some errors in the model behavior of a solar panel using this power supply as a current limited source. And the reason why I'm using it for this experiment is because lately it has been raining a lot in my location. So uh, using the solar panels is kind of really not an option at this point. All right, my friends, I hope you had fun watching this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to the Innovation Lab. And if you would like to see the follow on video of the testing using the actual solar panel, that will also be uh, helpful to notify you when we release that video. Alright my friends, thanks again for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.